Hey guys, this is Larry with Packmaster's Dog Training, and uh, this is going to be the second part to conditioning your dog to the e-collar. And uh, what I have here is some of the, the most common questions I get. So I made a list of questions here that I get from you guys all the time, asking me little things and, and tips on, on what I do. So I'll start reading them, and I'll give you an answer, and uh, just take a couple minutes here. First question that I get a lot is, how often should your dog wear the collar? Um, all the time. If you're with them, make sure he has it on, especially during the conditioning phase. The last thing you want to do is put it on him, start training, and then take it off as soon as you're done. You don't want to do that. Then you're just setting the dog up to uh, only listen to your commands when the collar's on. So if you're with them, have it on. If you're going to be going out and leaving them home, take it off, of course. You know, you don't have to leave it on them then. But when you're with the dog, have him wear it. If he's going to have it on for six, seven, eight hours at a time, Make sure every few hours you just loosen it, move it to the other side of the mix so he doesn't get sore spots or anything. But if you're with him, make sure he's wearing it, okay? Other question is, what if your dog won't leave your side? Uh, this is very common. We call it the Velcro dog. This happens quite often. When you're conditioning the dog and working on the recall, you don't have to wait till the dog is far away from you. He doesn't need to be 15, 20 feet away. He doesn't need to be 10 feet away. If he's right at your side, you can make very little movements. Just always try to back away from the dog, okay? Not side to side, not forward, not into the dog. If he's sitting right in front of you, just take a step back. Back, tap, back, tap. Okay, very, very short movements. Another thing you could do is, uh, I had this problem with Luca, my, my 11-month-old Malinois. I started him on the e-collar when he was about nine months old, and he wouldn't leave my side because when we go out, he's on me. He's looking to work. He's looking for a toy. So I had no chance on working on a recall with him with the e-collar because he was always ready to go. So in his case, I taught him the send away first. That was the first thing I taught with the e-collar, the send away or the place command. Because this way, I had to do the opposite. Instead of calling him to me, he's always there. I taught him to go away, place command. And then once he's on the place, the area that I set up, something elevated, he's not going to leave. So then I also got to work on the recall that way. So the way I worked on the recall with, with my young Mal was uh, having him away from me sitting on the place. But the first thing I taught was the send away. And you could do the same thing if the dog really doesn't want to leave your side. That's going to be more common with the, with the high drive working dogs. Okay. Then I have, what do you find is the best way to teach clients that never used a collar or used it incorrectly? I've been through that a lot. Every client I work with, no matter if I go to the home and do private lessons or I do board and train, I spend time educating the owners. They have to understand everything I do from start to finish. Um, and by far the best way I found, and I stopped doing this for a little while because I hated doing it, I found it kind of corny, but it's the only thing that worked. I don't put the collar on the dog, work with the clients, and then have them practice on the dog. No. I hold the leash. When we start, the client holds the e-collar in their hand. I check the levels on the e-collar till they could feel at the lowest level, just like we do with the dog. And then everything we're going to work on with the dog, I'm doing with the client. So I'll use their name and I'll tell them come, I use the leash, I tap, and this is all with the, the clients, the dog right now, we're role playing. And I know it sounds silly, but it shows the clients the timing and the accuracy of everything. That is the quickest way for them to learn. And then after we do that part, then I become the dog. I'm holding the collar and they have to work with me. And I could do little things to make it a little more difficult for them and teach them how to work their way through it. And I'm, t I'm telling you, I don't budge on this. This is the easiest way by far to teach someone with no dog handling skills, no e-collar skills, nothing. They get it like that. I stopped doing it for a little while because I hated the whole role playing thing and people are having a much harder time learning how to, uh, how to catch on because they didn't quite understand the timing or when they should be pressing the button and, and when they shouldn't. So that's a, a great question and I get a lot. That's by far the best way to do that. Okay. Next question is, what if your dog won't come to you? Um, and that's during the conditioning phase and the recall. People are really quick to get rid of the leash because they're in the e-collar. I tell them, you do not get rid of that leash. The leash is there through the conditioning phase the whole time because you don't want to give that dog a chance to blow you off. You don't want to do that. You're setting him up for failure. You, you want to set him up to succeed. 
So during the whole conditioning phase, even if it lasts a few weeks, you keep that leash on the dog. The leash is a great way to guide the dog and show them exactly what you want. So if you're calling him to you and you're using the collar and he's not getting it, the leash is there to guide him. You show him. You combine the collar with the leash and the verbal command. He's got to learn all three. You put all three together, that's how he learns the language of the e-collar. You don't want to drop that leash too quick. Okay, next question is, do you use it to teach things? Not really. Um, a lot of dogs, I guess we do teach the recall, that if they don't know a recall at all. So that'd be the extent of actually teaching things. Everything we teach, we teach through motivation, uh, positive reinforcement, food, toys, mostly food, but we always teach using food. Once the dog knows it, then we can implement the e-collar into it. It's not fair to go using an e-collar on a dog for something they don't know how to do. It's, it's, it's just not right, and uh, we, don't, we don't use it that way. Okay. Um, do you use it to stop things like digging or counter surfing? Yeah, absolutely. One of the reasons we don't use it for things like working on aggression or the dog jumps on people, we don't like to use it um, for corrections and things like that because one of the biggest mistakes people make with the e-collar is they cause suspicious behavior with the dogs. You don't want to cause any suspicious behavior. For example, if your dog is out in the grass and he's sniffing, he's really got his nose in something and he won't come to you and, and you know, you jack it up and you, you, you hit him with the e-collar and you freak the dog out, you can make him suspicious of whatever's around you. You can make him suspicious of the grass or whatever he was sniffing, whatever's nearby. You don't want to do that. But when it comes to things like digging or uh, jumping on your counter, getting your garbage, eating your bushes, there you want to cause suspicious behavior. So say your dog's a digger, you know, you set him up, get to a spot where you can watch him through, uh, through the window or something, wait till he starts to go dig, and as soon as he starts, then you hit him at a high level. You don't start low and go high, you hit him at a high level one time, you'll never have to do it again. If you do, it'll be one or two times. So yeah, things like that, um, you, you, you can use it as a correction and you want to create that suspicious behavior. You don't use a command with it, you don't tell him no and then hit the collar. You don't want to be around, you don't want to be in sight. You want him to think that digging caused that to go off. Okay. Uh, when can you stop having the dog wear the collar? Why would you want to? Um, if I take my dogs out in public, if I take Bruno out uh, downtown Nashville, I can take Bruno out with me wherever, wherever I go without a collar on. He'll go any place with me. Um, he won't chase animals. He won't do anything. He's a, he's a great dog. I'm still always going to have a collar on him because it's there for my protection, for his protection. You never know what can come up. Uh, one time I was throwing a ball in a Walmart parking lot for Bruno, and yeah, that was stupid, my mistake. But I threw the ball and I didn't see a car coming. If he didn't have an e-collar on, he's got insane ball drive. He would not have heard me screaming at him to stop. The collar is the only thing that he was able to feel to stop him right in his tracks and hold him. And, uh, you know, some of you might say you shouldn't be throwing a ball in a parking lot. Yeah, I shouldn't. I, you know, I screwed up there. But me screwing up, I could have got my dog hurt real bad. So, if you're so anxious to have the collar come off the dog, then you're still seeing this as a negative thing, and that's not good. You're never going to be successful with it if you see it as a negative thing. If the dog goes out in public, around your house, I don't mean the dog has to have it on all the time once he's, he's well behaved, but if you go out in public, have it on him. You need that extra safety, unless you don't plan on taking him off leash. I don't put a leash on my dog, so I'm always going to have an e-collar on him. Okay, um, what do you teach? after the recall. The next command I teach after the recall is the send away or the place command. So we always try to do the opposite. We teach the recall, we teach him the send away. And I'm not going to go into how we teach him that. Um, you know, we teach the place command with food, learning, and then we incorporate the e-collar. But that's the next thing that I like to teach. And then from there we start adding all the simple things, the loose, the loose leash walking, the downs, the sits. But the recall comes first, then I teach the send away or the murder police command. Okay, and at what age do you start a dog? Here you're going to have different opinions and people will argue this till they're blue in the face. Um, some people start dogs as young as 12 weeks old. I don't. I don't, I don't like that. Um, for me, the longer you can wait, the better. The more the dog knows, the better. The only reason I even started Luca, my Malinois, at nine months old, I didn't plan on doing it until well after a year.
but he was starting to get very reactive to uh, strangers. And if he saw him walking, he'd want to run after people barking and growling. And he's not going to do anything, but you still can't have that. You can't have a dog scaring people like that. So I knew it was time to start um, start the e-collar with him just for that 100% recall. I can't take a chance like that with you know with him getting himself in trouble. So I like to wait till at least seven or eight months old. I prefer a year, even a little longer. Teach everything you can through positive reinforcement. Teach, teach, teach. Stand the e-collar is easy, you know, but. I know a lot of people do. I don't like putting it on really young dogs. I like to wait till at least seven or eight months old. And I have done younger dogs, four or five months old in the past, but I just like them to be a little bit older and, and know a little bit more because then you wind up doing too much teaching with the e-collar. Okay. And I think this is the last question we have here. What if you do if you make a mistake? You're going to make a mistake. Every client I deal with, I tell them. Um, if I do a private lesson, I'll go with them, say, on a Saturday. I work with them what I want them to do all week. I give them homework. I need you to do this all week, I tell them. I tell every single person I talk to, you will screw this up. You're going to make mistakes over and over all week long. It doesn't matter. If everybody makes mistakes. It'll be okay. You're not going to mess the dog up. As long as you're not being abusive with it and doing it to... to cause the dog harm or hurt them, you're going to make mistakes here and there. You go right back to really low levels and go back to how you're used to be using it. I'll give you an example. A client I had recently, their dog had a very bad experience um, at another trainer, another natural trainer with the e-collar. So she was against it and I didn't force her to. Once she saw other clients with me and my dog, she said, let's do it. So I did like we talked about earlier. She was the dog first. I taught her everything and then I held the collar and she was working me. Well, her dog felt it on level two and three on the Einstein collar. Single digit, super low. She has a female pit bull. When I was using it, when she put the collar on me, I didn't feel it till up in the 30s and 40s. That's when I felt it. So I was having, you know, I was doing a recall. She's calling me and, you know, I'm walking away. Well, then when we put the collar back on the dog, she forgot that she had raised the level up because she was working me and I didn't feel it to the higher levels. And the first thing she did when she hit the collar on the dog, the dog yelped and she got all scared and upset. I said, no, we just went, I took the dog, we went right back to level two and went right back to working the dog and rewarding. And that was it. There's no, uh, it doesn't run over and mess the dog up. You know, you, as long as you're not doing it repeatedly, you will make mistakes. Just correct them and move on. And uh, I think that's the last question we have for now. So I hope that answers some of the questions you may have about e-collar training. You know, it's it, it could be confusing to people. You take their time. When you start off, there's no rush. I don't care if you condition the dog and just work on the recall for a month. It's not going to hurt the dog. The slower, the better. So uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you.